Hi, I'm John. Uh, <coughs> I'm going to be presenting a talk on um, money and accounting, which um, makes sense because I work at Chai. Um, yeah, I see one person has laughed. Um, <clears throat> that was a joke because um, Chai means bye bye. Although <laughs> 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 it's not true in this case. <clears throat> so, uh, <clears throat> so, uh, so when I completed campus, I'm not. Most people I know went through this. Um, you will be broke before you, you get your first job. And like, it's a reality everyone faces. Now, in my case, I got really, really, really broke because uh, I did not have any source of income. The surprising bit is when I got my first job, I worked for like a period of five months. And when like, I looked at my assets, I was still broke. It was like really weird. I could not understand what was happening. So, uh, so something else people notice is like if if you are broke, um, everything seems like it can be solved with money. Like you you think you don't have love, like money can solve that. You don't have what money can solve that. It's not right. But if you're broke, and I mean if you are really really broke, every problem is a money problem. <coughs> um, those who aren't broke, I've never been broke. Can't, can't understand that. Anyway, so um, this talk won't help you with. Uh, your brokenness. Um, <laughs> um, it won't also help with how to manage money. Um, what this talk does, it, it, it um, introduces you to a platform where, where, where you can track your money and um, use the whatever, whatever data you've tracked of yourself and your money spending habits to make informed decisions. Um, many at times, people think like, people um, tend to assume where they spend money. Like, if I ask anyone in this room, they say they spend most of their money or waste it on buying beer or going out and stuff like that. Yet, in my case, I was surprised that I spent most of my cash on um, taxes, not even the, the amount of beer I used to drink, which was, like, really weird. So, <clears throat> so first, um, what is plain text accounting? So, um, has anyone here heard of Markdown? Yes, sir. Okay, um, restructured text. Okay, cool. So um, the general idea is uh, of those is you have um, specific rules that you have to use um, that you can, uh, once you, you, you create a document with those rules, they can be formatted to output various reports or different other formats like PDF or HTML. So Ledger is, um, is kind of like that, but it's significantly simpler than Markdown or Structured Text or Ogmode, which unique to the Emacs people. <clears throat> so um why would why would why would someone want to use um um plain text accounting? Because there are a lot of tools that exist. You can use a spreadsheet, there are online tools that exist, we have QuickBooks and everything. So the first thing is it's a really simple text file. That means like uh whatever the case, even though even if you don't have the actual ledger software, you can actually open it up in any editor and analyze it, understand understand what is happening. The other is that it's really versatile, as I'll show you. Um, since it's used to track um, assets or variables that have um, quantity, you can use this to track it, to track anything. If you have time, I'll show a demo where um, you can create a simple uh, POS system using Ledger, which is amazing. Uh, next is you can actually version control your Ledger file. So uh, <clears throat> I don't know how people read their git commits, but in my case, uh, when I version control my Ledger files, I kind of make the commit messages really, really um, clear. Like I'll be like, uh, came, like today I'll be like, um, went to the lab, transport and stuff like that. Now the, the beauty of that is that um, I kind of don't need to keep a diary since I already maintain a ledger. So if I want to have a rough idea of what I did today, I just check my Git history and it'll be like, I went to the lab, transported the lab of this much. So that's a bit of version control. The other thing is like, if you are meeting a ledger with a group of people, um, and somebody messes up or there is um, some wheezy somewhere, you can actually just do git blame and you know who did the the mess thing up. And the last thing is since it's a text file and the tools, the tooling around the ledger thing output in standard um, Linux format, you can actually build a set line around this. <coughs> so, uh, so. If I told you to use Ledger, it, it wouldn't make sense because like 
my words don't have as much weight as other people's. So who who uses Ledger? First, it's a Fedora. Has anyone heard of Fedora? <laughs> okay, nice. <laughs> nice, nice. So um, so Fedora actually uses the the Ledger tool um to manage their public accounts. They have um the repo is public. Uh, let's see if I can show it to you. So this is a Ledger repo. Oh, oh, yeah, no. Okay, cool. This is just the ledger repo. And if you go there, you'll actually see how how they organize their ledger and how they, they do their finances. This this the, the, the mode of working is really good if you are uh, if you're an organization and want to use ledger. So uh has anyone heard of um the software conservancy group? Software conservancy? Okay. So the Software Conservancy Group is a group that um, kind of um, this kind of like um, takes on the ma administrative and financial management um, work of various open source projects. So um, the open source projects that are under it include um, JIT, um, Mercurial, we have Selenium, we have Inkscape. So all of those are under them. And the SFC group actually uses Ledger to manage the accounts, which is like really awesome. So apparently, like the demand for how like they, they use their ledger was like really high, so they created a, a tutorial that shows how NGOs can use ledger to become physically responsible and to be able to return taxes. Although it's based off of the US, so if you're an organization and you want to use ledger, you can actually start there, and then like go to the official ledger ledger docs. I think that would be an easier transition. Uh, next is we have companies that use this. Um, one of the companies I found is called SuperSource. So SuperSource does uh, scheduling, which basically means if you want to like organize an event somewhere, it actually deals with all the scheduling, uh, getting to hotels and everything like that. And their backend for financing uses Ledger. So it's basically the Ledger file, um, the Ledger CLI tool, and then they have a couple of Ruby scripts so that like various workers can add and remove transactions from the file. And lastly are individuals. Uh, you can find more people in that link. For that is ledger. I hope um, <coughs> it's a comprehensive list. So you know, ledger is a powerful tool. So uh, <coughs> I mentioned that ledger is a simple text file. So this is how it looks like. So ideally, you have the dates, you have um, a brief explanation of the expenditure, and then you have um, whatever expenditure has happened. So ledger works on something known as um, double entry. So double entry means like. If I use money, it has to come somewhere. For example, if you look at the second transaction here, um, the transport of use, that money came from the cash. So if I had another asset, it has, to have, it has to show somewhere where the money came from. Now, the unique bit about the ledger is like, it only allows like one, uh, it allows um, such a station to occur when you're creating the ledger. Because here's the catch, if anyone, um, creates a ledger or starts, starts a ledger, they already have income and they already have assets, right? So that money, you set it as equity opening balances. So that means like um, this money that has come from somewhere, don't do the double entry thing there. Just ignore that. And then after this, start the double entry things. So and for reporting, um, these are commands for doing this. And let me show you a simple demo on that. So, uh, Cool. So um we look at this ledger file. So we have the opening balances. So I have four assets, uh two bank accounts, cash and M-Pesa. And um these are various transactions that are occurring, right? For the for the month of March. So if I run balance, I can do ledger. Uh, minus F, starting ledger, and then um, balance. So um, it provides uh, um, a balance, like an income sheet, basically what I earned during last month and where I've spent the cash. If I want to filter out, I can do um, assets. I just want to show my assets. So like, uh, if you keep this, if, if you track this for like a, a long period of time, you will always know how much you are worth, kinda. And um, another way of doing this is you can use um, 
four or major minus f starting out equity assets. It just output outputs the data in a different format. Cool. And then if you want a, a good like balance sheet, you do ledger and then you add reg and then it outputs this, which basically uh, shows you the dates, what happened and how your balances are affected. Cool. So uh, if you look at this file, um, there's one huge problem. I don't know if anyone can notice it. Uh, I can give it like a couple of seconds. What? <coughs> <laughs> okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. These are problems. These are mistakes in my end. So let's change that. Okay. Cool. Yeah. That. 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 I did not expect that. Okay. Um. Can anyone see something else? Yeah. Uh, there's expenses, trans, expenses, transport, and expenses, transport. We refer to the same thing. Yeah, yeah, cool, yeah. So if you look at it, so this is like uh, a really huge problem where since you're actually adding the information with, by typing it out, there's a huge chance that you can have like the same expenses but named differently. So you can have transport as I've done. Let's say you can have um, beer, alcohol, gauge. So that's a problem, especially when you're actually balancing out and analyzing how well you spent your cash because they'll occur as different entities. So to fix this, uh, so I have to go to demo two. So I created this strict start not ledger. Yeah, fine. So to fix this, ledger has um a tool that can manage your accounts. So if you look at accounts .date, so this contains a list of all the all the accounts I want to allow to my ledger. So that means if I add a transaction that is not in this account, um, it will actually throw an error. So let me add um, trans young paste fp ce. So if I run this command uh, ledger by oh, ledger minus minus strict explicit and then minus f sorry about that but and then if you if scroll up there's a one so if you want this to be really really strict you have to add um pendantic and it actually won't work so it throws an error so that's a means of like kind of like controlling your your, your assets so um so if you're starting out with ledger it's like a, a tall order to expect someone to already have a list of accounts that they use so in my case what i did is i used ledger for like four months and then i kind of updated the accounts so how you do that in this case is uh so if i rm the accounts file so if i do ledger accounts uh, minus f strict starting Oh. File to does not sound. Oh, sorry about that. So I have to uh, remove this line. It will actually list out the accounts that I've been using. So if, if, let's assume you've used the tool for a period of four months. So you already have you already have a pretty good idea of whatever accounts you have. So you just run this and it will output this. And what you'll have to do is let you pipe this to the to whatever file you want. And then um so, uh, so this however this won't work. So what you need to do is you need to add uh accounts at the start of each of each line. So uh percentage s whoa. so uh That way, I know you have a list of, of, of valid accounts, and then you can actually now go through it and remove whatever seems redundant. 
like in this case I can remove this run manager command again and then see if it works cool so our uh, fine so um the actual ledger com command I've run for one is, is pretty long so um you can actually add all the commands to a ledger rc file as seen seen above these three lines and anytime you run ledger it will assume you already have those commands so it actually simplifies the typing process cool <clears throat> yeah now uh so if you if 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 you earn cash in multiple currencies or you have access in multiple currencies ledger provides a means of dealing with that so all you just need to do is just input your cash in you know, whatever currency you have and it will kind of like save it as that cash if it was converted for something else you don't have to like um know the conversion rate all you just need to know like for example here is like um i spent it i spent eight dollars and that means it's as at the conversion rates on 21st it's 900 shillings and the same yeah so uh if you have multiple assets uh, cool so uh, if you have multiple assets you can run there are some interesting commands you can run so first let's do it by currencies basic not ledger this lists out your uh, your assets in both currencies that you have however you might be interested in just having like knowing how much your worth is in dollars or in ten shillings so what you do by that is you add uh minus x and then ksh here and then to list out your worth in ten shillings so let's look first uh, so bad assets yeah so it's converted everything to <coughs> shillings now um, if you have noticed you haven't put in the con uh, the actual conversion rates and they change on a day-to-day -day -day basis so what this does it kind of assumes that the conversion rate you want to use is the um, conversion rate of the last um, exchange rate you have in a ledger file if you want to like use a different um, conversion rate um it has a format that uses um price db so i have price db so um this is an example that shows how you can like track other assets in, in my case i have oranges sweets and dollars so uh so to convert from an from an orange to kenya shillings basically I'm one orange is 20 kenya shillings one sweet is 20 kenya shillings one dollar is 100 kenya shillings and this is uh how you change the dates on it so let's remove that so if i want to run this um price db yeah uh, press db x orange it's a log log number in the command yeah but pattern five presses the db mm -hmm. cool yeah so i'm worth 13 10 oranges <laughs> <laughs> okay fine so um if 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 you want to change this to be something else <laughs> so this is how much i'm working can actually use. so as you can see like you can use this to track um a lot of things not just money so um in my case i use this to track um the stocks of bought uh use this to track the stocks of bought i use it to track um the various bank accounts i have if I buy treasury bills or bonds, I track them using this, and I just use the price of DB or the negative X just to use the last conversion rate. So the last thing I'll show is uh first. Cool. Yeah, so uh we're done with that. <coughs> so uh this is where you can find help on the ledger CLI. I will try to do a small demo on a, a point of sale system after this. So basically uh ledgercli.org that is the uh, um, official documentation for the ledger tool I use um, so if you are an emacs user a power emacs user so these guys created something known as um, ledger mode I haven't looked at it I don't know how it works 
but um for the people of see it just seems like magic and honestly i'm scared of magic so i just to avoid that <laughs> <laughs> okay um also um there are other there are other alternatives to this these are original there there are other alternatives created for this so you have each ledger if you are a haskell haskell or functional guy you can uh, look at that um you also have for python they have something known as bean count so uh i know that um hit ledger and ledger are syntactically similar but bean count has a slightly different uh user interface however if you want to um build external tooling for that i prefer you use um bean count because um it's python and it's just python <laughs> it's easy to extend yeah yeah being the plant yeah in fact if, if you read their documentation it's like really funny because like they say like assuming you have a couple of beans <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay cool so um interesting things so um first i've mentioned um h ledger so um the biggest advantage of h ledger over ledger is that it has a web interface so uh so uh, i recently um built oh yeah i need to zoom it so um control shift okay cool so i recently um built a desktop and it was a giant for between me and my bro and you need to have like um combined like transaction in kuchanga right so we we, we track that using this so you remove a mount sometime remove some more. so as a demo so um the beauty of hlj over the other is it has our interface so how this works on my server is it runs on some um on a socket and then i just root on my engineer's config to that and then i've set up a password using ht password it, it cannot be like the safest ways but it works for the time yeah it works for the time yeah so if you look at it this especially if you aren't like really into this uh you don't have to exactly edit the text files because um this kind of like sorts you out on a lot of things so for example if you want to add a transaction this so you can add the date add the description whatever assets and then add it um if you want to look at balances you can actually do queries uh can i have the question mark and then this is all the queries you can do so this is like a really uh simple way to do with ledger the disadvantage of this is like you lose the um the power version control so if someone messes up with this code i remember i tried this out with someone else and they messed up and they were like it was a me and you don't have proof for that so uh cool so that's h ledger and their web tool what yeah it's on my server just on my server it's it's like really really light yeah so um something else is uh this so uh you have all that on oh control shift cool yeah so um so you have heard of web assembly so this is someone that took the h ledger um source code and like compiled it to web assembly and then it runs on the server so i don't know why but it's actually like really cool it's actually something that is really cool so like you can actually add add expenses look at your assets save the file and do whatever you want it's actually really awesome and i discovered this and lastly we have um the bean counts so the the biggest advantage you know of using bean counts over over the other ledger tools is that it provides really good um charts and analysis for this cause like this is just an example from their demo page but it has like graphs you can look at your balance sheets graphs and everything so like this is the biggest advantage of using bean tools over the other the disadvantage of this is it's python so it will be a bit slower but i don't think anyone here has like we have like the, the amount of transactions that will cause that create a huge impact and um that's cool and then of course can also edit edit the ledger file and everything else so um so you Gates, uh, thing on 
uh, so oh yeah so how how i use ledger ideally is uh i have i have a git server yeah, and then i push to there yeah so that, that's how that's how i i i do my my my, my ledger transactions so yeah and then um the other, the other beauty of, of 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 my setup my current setup is like uh, i have some tooling on my server that kind of automatically sends out um an email summary of uh, how much i'm worth every every month to my email address so like <laughs> <laughs> so like <laughs> so like so like all, all, I, all I just need to do is like just add them out and then at the end of the month I get, I get some report that tells me you um you're worth this much so you can do that cool uh and that you let me see if I, yeah is it a series of text files oh yeah so now that that's that's where it comes to versatility so you can use different ledger different um ledger files like different text files so for example uh for the uh for the software conservers one and the folder i think what they have done is like they kind of have different ledger files for different organizations or groups of people so like you can have like financing this is a ledger file um developer this is a ledger file and then these are like i mean uh management is a ledger file and then combine it all into like a parent ledger file and then do a transaction there does that make sense okay cool yeah it's not it's not so it's a text file right so if you want to encrypt your data you can do it there yeah it will mess up the git stuff yeah but um if 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 like Okay. Yeah. I like how you started the question and then like kind of answered yourself. So. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah. So. Okay, so, so, okay. so um, I haven't exactly looked at how Fedora and SF um, do their ledger things, but how I can see that happening is this. So the, the, the amounts remaining in the, in the primary accounts remain like in, apparent, in apparent file that, that only, have, only some people can edit, right? And whatever other departments do, they just add expenses. Right. If if you reach a point where you add, like you have added an expense that overshoots your budget, um, it kind of like you you get an automatic email that tells tell you like hi, you're done with your money. Because it's, it's a simple txt file, and then there there's a ledger command in that does that. So you can actually create a tool where if someone pushes to the server, just run the ledger commands, do these checks, and if there's a problem, email the person responsible. So it would be better just run everything. Defenses yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I know that like, that is what the this, this Passas company. That's what they have done. So they basically have the the the, the, the base ledger file they are using, but no one has ever seen it directly. So you, you, have, you have just created a, a lot of tooling behind it. Yeah. Another disadvantage of the ledger thing is apparently um, people are complaining about this a lot. If you start a company or you are an individual an and maintain a ledger and want to return taxes. Um, apparently most accountants don't understand the double entry thing. So like, yeah, I, I found it hard, I found it shocking, but it's it's a common thread when you go to the to the mailing list. So uh, the fix for this apparently is um, the accountant doesn't need to have their profile. You can just send the accountant the income statements that have basically in this day to report that and this other spent, and they can use that to do their accounting things. So you can, can you export to like an account? You can export this to CSV. You can export it. You can export 
reports to CSV. Because I know like um, Bones used to do that with their accountant some time back. So what they did is like they do whatever they do for one whole year. And then at the end of the year, they export everything to CSV, send it to the accountant. And then they, they just use that information to do their taxes. So what's the pitch part of that? If I have a service and then there are many providers here. Yeah. yeah. Then at the end of the month, I need to figure out the splits, what who gets what. Is that a good use case? So, okay. Let's say we're giving me some, some company or something. Yeah. And then I'm paying them for a use or for something. Oh, and then like, I don't know. Yeah, okay, so you can figure out the splits, who gets everyone's share. Uh, okay. You'll have to, to build something on top of like, for that to work, yeah. Because like, what Ledger basically does just tell you, um, you had, um, this is how much you got, this is how you spent it. Right, yeah. So if you want, you can, you can actually like, if you actually do common on like, I've seen this in one case where what they do is, uh, let me see. Uh, so let me open one. Yeah. So what they do is like, um, this explanation tab is kind of like a unique identifier. So like in your case, you can have like this tag to be like the user ID of someone. And then at the end of the month, you can have to like use that to determine how much someone can earn. Okay. Something else. So when, one more thing. What if when you're creating your asset, yeah. what, if, what if it's not fixed like a salary which you get every month, but it comes in periodically, but not on a, on a regular schedule? Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. So let me, let me see. So, that is still the school. Ideally, what you do is, let's say I do work today, yeah. and then I earn something. So like I can say like freelance, and then I can say um, assets, cash, and then I put um, k search, 20k. And then what, all, all you just need to do is you just set that this is income, and then you can make freelance. So it doesn't have to be monthly. Okay. I can do this as much as I want. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Any other question? It just occurring to me like the double entry means the first line where money comes from. Yeah, yeah. The second line where money. So from. ideally, so like I, so the ideal the, the so the ideal way of like inserting this would be this minus um twenty thousand. Mm -hmm. So that it actually reflects. But this is kind of like really redundant. So like the place this works is where like you want to like um, to add a couple of like um, transactions. Let's say um, I do yeah lag, and then I say expenses transport um, one hundred, and then um, expenses food, and then I do um Kenya shillings um. Yeah. So so you have that. And then like I paid I paid my food within Mpesa. So what I do is assets Mpesa and then shillings on minus three hundred. They say I paid two hundred shillings within Mpesa. So what will work is it will take this and then the asset will be like the balance, which is two hundred shillings. But I want to ask how do you validate that because considering the expenses are four hundred. Yeah. But you spent two hundred or so so what what it will do is it will automatically tell me that it will automatically say that cash was 200 however if i did an insert oh, here cash is the remainder, yeah, is the remainder. Oh, okay. however now if i do this if i do this and put this negative 100 so if i do this ledger with one error it will tell me like there's a place where the balances don't don't work out and tell me the exact line yeah and, uh, Get 
Yeah, so like, yeah, so like, so like, so like, um, the biggest advantage of this, because like I've used Ledger for this tool for like two years right now. So like, I can tell you how much I've spent on like beer since two years ago. Like I'll be like, oh, I've spent this amount of beer. And like, people might get shocked with that, but if I tell you how much I've spent on actual transport, it'd be like, whoa. Like, yeah, so like how I figure this tool works, how this tool will relate to like actual management of finances is that um, you don't guess because I, I figure like the biggest problem is that people actually guess like uh, you're like um, I've spent so much this month and then you ask what do you feel like you've spent the most on and then I say uh, I think I bought a TV or something. But like having these actually like give you like whoa you spent these on these these on these and here where you need to like clear things out. Yeah. One more question on uh, the currency conversion. Yeah. So it uses the last rate you provided. If you don't if you don't provide a price dot DB file, mm-hmm. it will use the last rate provided. That works on currencies and stocks. Okay. Yeah. If that would mean so when it stores it, it stores it in the currency that it came in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then now when 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 I when I when I when I say force this to be in Kenyan shillings, it will look for the for the currency conversion that is the latest in the system and then convert that. Okay. Yeah. So uh cool. So um other features of Ledger, um I know like you can do budgeting within Ledger. Uh I think it's only budget that that that, that have, oh yeah, and then you can also track loans. And it's, it's something that pisses off a lot of people that I know because like if if you borrow if you borrow money for me, I, I won't I won't like push you to pay up, but there's always like a permanent store somewhere. So <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Also, like if if you can take you can take that further and then you're like, okay, fine. If someone you can like set a threshold. If someone owes me like more than ten k, send them an email per month. <laughs> 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 People don't know this. <coughs> banks, banks ever like they lose your transaction. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, that is that. So apparently, um, and you know. So, so this happened to me with a particular bank. What, what we usually do per month is like I receive cash in one primary account, and then I kind of dispose it using Pesa Link. So I did it to a particular bank, and it never reflected. And like I assumed it had gone through, right? So how I discovered this was at the end of the month, I received my email telling me like, you need to have like X amount in this bank. And like when I go to the bank, it, it does not reflect. So I actually had to call them and it fixed that discrepancy. So it's kind of like, it also behave, acts like a, a really nice safety net. Let me the question of how they handle um, records of transactions, the receivables. I don't know how to put this, like receipts. Oh yeah, so now with receipts. Yeah, yeah so with, with, with receipts. So this is what I've seen with um, the Fedora project. What they do is, uh, this is the, the lag with the receipt number, right? And now I think they have a policy where you, you, once you buy something and have the receipt, you kind of like get a digital copy of it and then save it somewhere in that number. So when they report, when, when they run the report, it comes and then there, there are links which says like if you click this link, you see the receipt to this. So it's, it's, it's like ledger is kind of like an open format. So what what you do, you, you use it for depends on how organized you are. Cool. Yeah. So you can have all the receipts in some some blog somewhere. Yeah, yeah. And then just this just just, like just generate something that like, if you want to see the receipt, click on this to take it to the receipt. Cool. Yeah. What's the difference? What's the difference? What's the difference? What's the difference? On this, okay, I don't, I don't have any flow. So how, how, how I use it in my case is more or less I save, I, I have 10 minutes per day in the evening just to add expenses. So like, it's, it's a single branch? Yeah, mine is just a single branch and then you push to that single branch. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a single branch, yeah. Because like, uh, my reason was like, it's more or less like, I like, the entry for today will be more like expenses, transport, expenses, food, and then access cash, right? And then the JIT commit went to lag on this JIT, and then they push that to the server. So like, the, the, I think the hardest bit about like, the ledger thing is um, being regular. Where um, most, most of the times, 
people tend to skip. Like, it's a problem a lot of people are faced where yeah, ideally you will skip like two weeks. Like, you have taken two weeks and you haven't added an entry. And like, human memory is crappy. So you won't be able to clearly identify which day you spend something. So in my case, how I deal with that is I have, I have something I put called um, expenses. And, and then like, if, if I haven't run a sort of manager for like five days, I'll, I'll be like, how much do I feel I've spent in this? And then I'm like, what expenses random, 10K. And then I just leave it at that. Mm. Yeah. yeah, but also like, to avoid that, I tend to pay with means that have some tracking, like M-Pesa, Yatel Money, or Pazia. Cool. Say you screwed up, is it possible to like say, this is my current state? Like, this is my current state. Is it possible for the other staff to like, balance themselves out against my current state? No. So you just have to add a transaction there. Yeah, you just have to, yeah, so like, so how that works is like, so occasion, occasionally, it's really hard to, <laughs> so it's really hard to track, to track cash, because like, there are things you buy that like you never even remember. Like you bought a sweet somewhere or, or you went you bought some book somewhere. So in my case, how I do that is I have Or you lost money. Yeah, yeah. I have expenses petty somewhere, and then I have expenses um expenses what lost. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, another cool thing when someone steals from you when someone steals from you, you can know how much you lost. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I lost my wallet, yeah. and I knew how much was in that wallet. Yeah. Ah, I see. So, 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 so it's kind of like, yeah, yeah, so, so it can really mess us because, like, if you get stolen from right now, there's, there's a tendency of people to panic and overestimate their losses. Yeah. So, someone will be like, Oh, I had 10k in my wallet, and, they, and then in actuality, you had a legend, like, you had only 2,000 shillings or something. So, yeah. no need to panic. So, how, how about transfers? Yeah. Oh, passes. Okay, fine. Yeah. So, uh, if so, if I want to do a transfer, let's just clean it up. So, on um, assets, cash. So, let's say I need to do cash from Mpesa, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, I do this transfer, and then I do um, assets, cash, and then I say I can actually do 1,000, and then um, assets, job, and that's an expense. And those are transfers. Yeah. Oh yeah, so these are trans- this, this, and then you can also do these expenses mm-hmm. and PESA, and then you do um, conditions. Mm-hmm. So it is basically, you have transferred as much things from your investor to your cash, so you have as much things in hand, and it costs you conditions to do that. Mm-hmm. As I said, like, this is like, it's kind of like really simple to use. You just need to like get a bit used to the idea of double entry. I think that's the, that's the other question. Like fundamentally, you need to understand accounting to some degree. Yeah. Not, you to you need to understand that's the fact. No, I think not accounting because accounting is really scary. You just need to understand <laughs> that money has to come somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Especially once 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 you get the opening balances thing here at the start. Um, so, for example, there's, there's there's a time you did uh, a negative on income freelance. Yeah, yeah. And I was trying to identify why it was a negative. Yeah, that's what I mean by you need some basics in accounting before you remember the freelance thing. Yeah. yeah. So that means you've added twenty thousand to your cash. And it came from it came from work. I did work. So ideally you, you don't even need to do this to add this. Because the simplest that your friends don't have this. Um, you don't need to do that. But adding the negative twenty thousand, you're kinda like being really strict in the concept of double entry. Which shows that the twenty thousand came here, but now ledger the, the ledger tool that will do the accounting for you will kind of make that assumption for you. Cool. Yeah. How 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 accurate are you able to to track this kind of uh, spending to say? So like uh, just going by this alone, yeah. could you like for example um, guess at your your bank balance account now to make a Okay, so currently, kind of right now, the yeah. is like right now, I know how much I can run a command and it will tell me how much is in any account I, I, I own. And how, like, how, what, what, what's the error of margin? There's no error of margin. There's no error of margin. No error margin. Yeah, there's no error margin. Yeah, so like, so like, because like the problem with this, the problem when I figure with most people is like, 
you tend to have a lot of assets. Like, so by assets, I mean like, like in my case, I have m -Pesa, I have Airtel money, and then I have cash, right? That's what I can readily use. And then I have um, bank accounts, that is, I think I have three bank accounts, right? And then like, you have investments. Like I've bought uh, treasury bonds, I have, um, I have a professor in money market accounts, and then you also have perhaps um, education insurance funds. So that list is like our nine items. So you can track that in paper, you can track that in ledger, but not tracking that is a bad mistake. Because like something might happen somewhere, because most of these run, run on software systems, right? Yeah. And then suddenly you, it tells you you have zero shielding for something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you can run it yourself and you have the benefit of proving yeah, 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 yeah. evidence. Yeah, so and, and also the other idea is like the fact that adding, adding transactions is so simple in this, especially if you're used to using the terminal, that uh, it takes me like five to ten minutes a day. And that's like a day that I've done a lot money wise. Yeah. Also, you can see uh, trends on your spending because you know this, uh, this is weird. Yeah. But if you start tracking your finances, you'll notice there's no way you can be spending on, say, food 10k, and then next month you jump to 50k. So when you do like a monthly report, and then you say, whoa, why is this 30k from? Then you expect you to do that month. Like, it will make you ask yourself some questions. Yeah. There, there are trends on how, like, he spends. Yeah, basically, yeah, basically like, it's kind of like in software. If you don't, like, track, if, if you want to optimize your system and you haven't like tracked or don't have data on what are the bottlenecks or something, you're basically just guessing. You might be optimizing something that doesn't even need optimization. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, <coughs> so you, you mentioned that uh, the, <coughs> that banks sometimes lose uh, track of their transactions and that you have to call them D. So can you use this as evidence to prove that look, there's something? There's a discrepancy between my bank balance and uh, what I have. I don't think you can use this as evidence, mm -hmm. but in my case, uh, what helped me out is like I call them and then I told them, Hi, I did the transaction on this date. Right, just checking the system. That you have your own paperwork. Yeah, yeah. Like, at least warn you. Yeah, it's yeah. thing. Yeah. Because and also, like, if, if, if you're really concerned about that, if you do a physical deposit in a bank, you can just like. Um, take a picture of that and save it like with a unique number or something on Google Drive or whatever, and then save yes. as a tag here with that number. So if they require evidence, you can actually use that. Because I know like this, that that skin. Because like I don't know, I don't know if you guys had, had the same problem in universities where for some weird reason you paid you, you you had paid fees, but the finance department tells you they have not paid fees, and then they require their receipts of evidence. Because he had that a lot of jaywalks. The, the, yeah. no, the problem with that, the problem with that, the problem with that was I remember this happened to a fellow of mine. He's like, after after like one or two years, the receipts were very obvious filled out. So like, and he went to finance and had like a blank, like a grey paper. <laughs> Here's the receipt, <laughs> and they were like, there is nothing here. Yeah. <laughs> so I figured like, if he if he done this, if 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 like, if you know that is a problem. Ideally, you put the date, the receipt number here, and if you go to a bank and want a copy of the receipt, it actually helps both parties out because you give them the date and the receipt number, and they can print you can print your another copy. Cool. Another question? Can you validate um, the amounts being applied? So for example, if your cash is one thousand and you want to remove two thousand from it. Would let a complaint that you actually don't have any money in that account. Okay, no, no, that that won't happen. What will happen is when you run the balance, it will show you how um negative or negative of balance. So how I use that? So so how I use that is ideally for so for ledger to track loss it has something known as liabilities. But in my case, I don't use that because most of the people that owe me cash at some point in the future, I also owe them cash. Right? It's, it's like, it's yeah, so what usually happens, so how usually do that with this? So, uh, let's say, uh, so I, I give Boniface, 
Ah, aqui eu estou a dar um xilinho. Não há nada a ser. Não. <laughs> <laughs> so, kind of the bones and asset, and he has my total and shit in fact. So, when he pays back, what I do is I will uh, do the same. I just do um, asset cash and actually it's 2000. Um, assets loan. Money. So currently Bonnie owns me zero shillings, right? But if he gives me a loan of a thousand shillings, I will um add three. Then if you do um get the balances. Oh um assets. Negative. So that means I owe money a thousand shillings. So I found, okay, you can actually use the ability to track that, but since in my case, like most people that owe me cash, at some point in the future, I also owe them cash, I cannot treat it as an asset. It's another way to uh, If you start keeping this, whatever, keeping a daily track of how you expect, like, uh, you notice you drift towards using things like, say, Empresa, like online transactions, because when you when, like when I send him when, you, when I'm paying him his loan and I pay him by assist the bank transfer, when I'm balancing my ledger, I can always go back and look. Like on this state, it's easier to track. Yeah, and yeah. it's, it's uh, it reduces conflict. <laughs> so any other question? Yeah, um, I'm wondering. Uh, let, let's say you're on the move and you don't have access to your laptop. Is there a way you can like modify the ledger? So yeah, in, in my case, I have um, a terminal on my phone. <laughs> so, um, I I search for my server and I edit it. Okay, so if that is, if if that is not possible, what you can do is you install HLedger on your server and um, link it up to the actual ledger file engine. So if 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 you can't edit it, you just open the browser page. I think it should be here. Let me see. Let me show it again. This one, and then you add transaction here. Okay. So now the, the catch with this is, if you have actual controlling a major file, you need to remember that um, next time you have a machine, you have to go to the server and push push the, the changes you made right here. Okay. Yeah. As you will find and go to change. You will find the no, like you see, like ideally, if I add a transaction here, it will, it will add the text file on the server. Right? It will add content in the text file on the server. Yeah, yeah. But those, con those contents have not been added to the value of the post system. Oh, okay. So, like, if, if I continue editing here and like, I try to push the be much conflict. Oh, so, you need to be conscious of that fact and do that, which makes it, which, yeah. But it's, it's going to be the same format. Yeah, it's, it's really yeah you'll save it in the exact same format. So, you just need to yeah, yeah. HLED doesn't have the ability to once you add commit for you. This, this. Yeah, because it's so this uh, doesn't. Okay. It's yeah, currently it doesn't. You can add it by, by, you can add that process by basically storing the HLED file in a decentralized file system. And then have one server be. It's one server be on the other. It's one server be on the other. What 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 you can also what what you can do with this is. You can um, you can watch the file on your server, right? And if it changes, you create you add a generic comment. Yeah, that that was the part, right? Yes. Yeah, that was. Um, anything else? Any other questions? Cool. Thanks. Does Ledger come with a primer for accounting? Because I still think. Okay, ideally, um, like, uh, all you need to know about not use Ledger is um, just. You can go and look at the docs. The docs are really comprehensive. But once you understand the fact that if I use, like, if I if I buy this, that money has to come from it can come from the cash. Because I, I think the, the biggest hole there is in I've understood that part. The yeah. problem when it comes to labeling accounts, whether assets or income or liability or that stuff. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Imagine some accounting background is required. Let me let me give okay a prime. Or you can make it up as you go. Let me give let me give let me give a prime. Yeah. Yeah. Probably, but not yeah. Because yeah. an income statement would require a proper classification. Yeah. So, like, so, like, a prayer for that would be like 
An asset is something that has value. Income is where I get my money from. A liability is someone that owes me money. Mm -hmm. You owe someone money. You owe, I owe someone money. Yeah, someone that you owe. Yeah. And then an expense is something that it's my money. Also, that's like uh, <laughs> okay. Okay, so I so like that that thing like uh, forcing yourself to like, come up with news. It's like a nice problem to have because. Uh, when you when you first to come up with names, it forces you to be aware of what pass what kind of person you are. Yeah. You know, like if you're doing some shady things, and then you just put at least there, you like you have to rethink some things. Uh, uh, okay, uh, something else like uh, to not be ledger is there's that you might end up in a in a in some I think they call it a rat a rat race where you basically want to track everything in a minute. So if you go and buy chips, you have expenses chips. If you go and buy a spuma, expenses spuma. So like a safe bet which work in my cases to generalize things. Like I have something on my food. So anything that enters my stomach is food. Entertainment. Also don't go crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I have something known as entertainment, anything that like if I go out on a movie or whatever, like a form of entertainment. Yeah. And then how how I can have a that is having comments. On the ledger thing, so, so like, so like, if I go and buy different tags on each ledger, not on ledger and other tags. Yeah, cool. How similar is it to the ledgers that you talk about? I use all my ledgers. I use it's better for that. Okay, because it's it's not taking any because it's actually like all the syntax for ledger stuff. Tabby, you know that. Okay. 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 <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so, um, so uh, um, disclaimer, everything I've done, I've used Veeam. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've used Veeam and on everything I've edited there, so... Yeah. Let's not lose the wall. Let's not lose the wall. So, yeah, so um, thanks. <laughs> thanks for that. Um, if you have any other questions, you can um, reach out to me later. Yeah. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.